I'm entering the Sound of Mall with uh, oh, 22, 23 knots. Uh, apparent wind, a uh, very close haul, 35 degrees, and uh, doing about five knots speed over ground, which is a little misleading because uh, I'm running into uh, probably a good half a knot of uh, foul tide, maybe even more. This is that place where there's lots of tide. And if you get the timing wrong, which I, I had to get wrong today, it just wasn't possible to do everything and get it right. So anyway, next stop, Lac Aline. The entrance to Lac Aline off the Sound of Mall after a 50 mile passage. all available for visitors? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Ah, good. Okay. I came to the right place. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I'm saying farewell uh, bright and early this morning to the sound of mole. And exactly as last year, I'm having to motor sail through it. But it is a beautiful place. Uh, yesterday, yesterday we had a near gale. And everyone was uh, buttoned up in uh, harbors. And, uh, but uh, today, no wind. I got the sail up, but got uh, five knots of apparent wind. And it's not forecast to get any better. So I think this is going to be a day of motor sailing. I don't like it, but you have to live with that. I don't know if you can see on the camera here. This is the swirling current of the uh, tide coming in. It's 52 meters deep here. And yet you still get these currents uh, rip-roaring through here. That's why you have to do the... Uh, well, you know, there's no complication about it but you have to look at the books and study the uh, study the currents well otherwise really tough slogging here Faroe Islands no nope. Scotland of Lorne in <laughs> Indeed it is just beautiful here. But not enough wind to sail on. Certainly not with the currents that they have here they have here anyway. Artford. Artfern. Artfern. Artfern Marina. Artfern Marina. Artfern Marina. C'est l'heure de déjeuner. We'll figure it out ourselves. Allez, on y va. Station calling out for Mrs. Outford, over. Yes, hello, Art from the San Vesa Isabel, just outside the marina. 12 meters long by 4 meters with a draft of 2 meters. And I'm looking for a berth for one night. Isabel, Isabel, this is 
Thank you very much. If you gr grab those, this. No, no, take this one here. It ships. Thank you very much. Thank you. No problem at all. We're just I'm arriving at the port of Rathlin, which is a small island about five miles off, north, off the coast of Northern Ireland. Several people sent me warnings that uh, there's not very much water here. The charts are a little inaccurate. There was supposed to be a range light to the left of the White House up there, but I sure don't see it. So I'm just heading straight in. It wasn't a range light, it was a sector light. Red white green but I don't see it now, can you imagine this you can't, you can't see it on the camera right here someone has put a fishing pot right there a fishing pot right at the entrance what were they thinking 4.5 meters under the keel sand. It's sand, but I did run aground there.
Hello solved. <laughs> Going around, I think this is called Fairhead, which is the northeast corner of North Ireland. So we're heading down the, the Irish coast here. And I'm doing five and a half knots, very close hauled, 30, 30 degrees apparent in uh, 16 knots of wind. I'm feeling alive this morning. Yeah, bring it on. The coastline of Northern Ireland, just at the entrance to uh, the channel leading to Belfast. So I'm just outside of Belfast. Pretty spectacular bird sanctuary here, I'd say. Do this. I'm at the entrance of Carrick Fergus, which is one of Belfast's uh, marinas. Coming up on the entrance to uh, Carrick Fergus outside of Belfast, I have to tell you I'm very nervous. The charts show this is very shallow. According to the tide, I've got uh, at lowest astronomical tide, there's one meter, and uh, I should have about three meters above that. But they say the bank is moving all around, and uh, it's a bit uh, stressful, this, this one. The entrance to Carrick Fergus, just outside of Belfast. Sunrise. I got underway this morning at uh, four o'clock, leaving uh, Belfast. I was actually at Carrick Fergus, which is one of the ports of Belfast, uh, and uh, I'm underway for a 10-hour sail to the Isle of Man, 
uh, a harbor called Peel, which has a tidal gate, so I have to respect that. And of course, 10 hours means that I'm going to have four to six hours of foul tide. You know, the, the tide running against me. But that's all right. Got a lovely day today, uh, a nice breeze, full sails out, the Genoa full on the main as well. Uh, cruising along right now at just under six knots, but uh, the tide is going to turn against me very shortly and I'll probably lose a knot and a half, maybe two knots for a few hours. Anyway, next stop, Isle of Man. Harbormaster Peel, Peel, Peel. This is sailing vessel Isabel, Isabel, Isabel. Good afternoon. Sailing vessel Isabel, uh, this is Peel Harbor. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to you. I'm about a mile and a half north of the uh, marina and I am 12 meters by 4 meters with 2 meters of draft looking for a berth for two nights. Isabel, Bill, yes sir, that's absolutely fine. Um, as you're probably aware, our marina is uh, flat gate control. Uh, we've got a huge for the flat gates to lower somewhere around 1500 hours. Um, once that's lowered and any departing vessels have uh, cleared the entrance, I shall call you in and uh, give you directions to a berth. Over. Copy all. I'll, I'll wait for the sill to come up at uh, come down rather at about 1500. Which one are you going to take? Sorry? Oh. You're used to it. <laughs> well, welcome to the Isle of Man, uh, which is an autonomous uh, protectorate of the UK, but they run their own show. And uh, I have just missed, there's a big motorcycle rally here every year called the TT, and I just missed it. Uh, but uh, there's still lots and lots of bikes around. This, the entrance here and the arrival was actually quite difficult. You know, there's about 15 knots of wind blowing here. And I had to do a 180 degree turn here to get in. And I have to tell you, that was a bit stress. And I'm wondering if, if I had to do it again, maybe I should have just gone straight and then reversed in. And reversing in might have been easier. The problem with reverse, you know, if the wind catches the 
the bow it'll take it to take to because you have to go forward and stop and it's that moment when you stop you lose control the bow is going to fall off with the wind and in 15 knots it can fall off very rapidly so i made it but i think it was more due to divine providence than to skill of the uh, pilot but uh well uh i'm here i'll give some more thought on how i could have done that better I don't think I'm going to get a glass of Chateauneuf de Pape here. <laughs>